The absolute abysmal stupidity of any and all karma as a system of justice doctrines. I've talked about this many times before on this channel and elsewhere, and I've explained the abundantly fucking obvious man-made origins of this really poorly thought idea. We've talked about and explained why and how there's no way in hell a being who is more intelligent than any human ever would ever come up with such a terrible, poorly thought, shitty, clunky, inefficient, ineffective, non-working system. And we've talked about for thousands of years how people have been really this stupid to not register how abysmally dumb the concept itself is. They also haven't been able to see why this system doesn't work and isn't working and isn't operating. They just keep going on and on. They have their guru, their teacher. This is what is going on. This is reality, yes. You will face reactions for what you do. You will get good or bad results. Yes, yes, yes. Very good. Very, very good. Etc. And this just goes on for thousands of fucking years. And people don't think deep enough to recognize, well... The cosmic motherfucker who thought this system up was really fucking stupid. And if there was no being that thought this up or came up with this, that's a really dumbass fucking system to have any universe or any cosmos run off of in some mechanical sense, in some impersonal mechanical sense. And it's obviously not running that way either. Because the laws of physics just doing their thing, that's not karma. People just try to act like, oh, no, no, the Vedic texts, they're just talking about the laws of physics, and that's what they mean by karma. No, they're not. In those texts, they're talking about you actually facing reactions for specific moral and ethical actions you engage in, or immoral and unethical actions, such as torturing other people, specifically, causing other people extreme degrees of harm, etc. That's what's being referred to in the Vedic text in terms of karma. It's not just talking about the laws of physics. So if you're going to be one of these liars trying to claim that no, karma was only ever referring to the laws of physics, you're lying. Get the fuck out of here. No, it wasn't. And you know that's not the case. So don't try to act like that was the case either. And if it was referring to the laws of physics, well, it's also useless and redundant because you can just talk about the laws of physics. No need to refer to it as karma in that case. Just use a different term. So... The fact that me, you, all the people listening can sit down and think of a better system, a better universe, better concept than this action-reaction, rather delayed action and reaction system means that if there was a conscious being behind thinking up this system, they're not as smart as we are. They're dumber than we are. So they have less than human intelligence. That's fucking terrifying. And if there was no being who thought this system up, well, there's no way in hell you would have some universal mechanic just automatically there in place that's rewarding moral actions and that's punishing immoral actions. You couldn't have something like that going on because for moral things to be rewarded, you have to have a conscious, aware being of what morals are and a moral standard to reward them or to punish them. If it's just feelings, I feel good if this happens, this person feels bad if that happens, therefore, vibrational feeling stuff going on, that's not sufficient enough to be a working system of justice against torturers. Okay? I feel this, they feel that, this vibration here, vibration that, here, there, this, that, and the other. Vibrations aren't enough to account for actually punishing insanely evil fucks. Or, in fact, they're not enough to prevent torturous evil fucks from existing in the first place. So it's useless, even if it's a mechanical thing going on with no conscious being behind it. So the amount of effort and time people put into defending this terrible fucking concept of karma is just really pathetic. It's ridiculous. Because... We're sitting here, we're like, are you kidding me? You're actually defending this kind of a fucking system? 
you're defending something that is fucked up and can seriously fuck you over and me over and is fucking all of us over right now. And you're defending the existence of this kind of a fucking thing saying people should accept it. Number one, it's not even going on that way, first of all. And we've demonstrated that it's not. But then you're defending the fucking thing. What the hell's wrong with you? Stupid as shit. Even if you believe the thing exists, why the fuck would you defend it? Continuing to exist as a thing. That's just stupid. That's the other problem. It's like, even if you believe, like an idiot, the thing actually goes on and exists, why the fuck would you defend the thing as something that should continue to exist? You see the point? So if there was a system designed to prevent harm from beings to a maximum degree, to ensure maximal bliss for as many beings as possible, as much of the time as possible, to keep them in a transcendent, blissful, happy state as long as possible, as much as possible, that system would look like this. On the slightest microscopic, well, in fact, it wouldn't even be allowed to get this far. You would just, all beings would have ingrained and built into them the nature of loving, kind, caring beings all the time, continually. So your very nature would automatically always be ingrained in you to be this affectionate being in your thoughts and your feelings and your actions all the time. And that would be the reality forever, eternally, right? So the original flaw is a world being allowed to exist, allowed in the sense of if there is a conscious being behind any of it, allowing a world to exist where beings can potentially be other than loving, kind, blissful beings. Because you can have an infinite variety or close to an infinite variety of activities, of experiences, of things that go on that are consensually pleasurable between all sorts of varieties of beings, all sorts of varieties of fun, happy, joyful experiences with absolutely no torturous, hellish, horrible experiences whatsoever. You just have massive varieties, drastically different varieties to keep things always exciting of pleasurable things going on. Easy. Piece of cake. Any deeply benevolent being who is very deeply powerful would set things up that way. But what do we have? We have a system where it's so far from that it's not even fucking funny. It's fucking sick how far it is from that. So if you're a being who sets up a system where beings have the ability to potentially think cruel thoughts and then also engage in cruel actions beyond just the thoughts alone, well, you're a sick sadistic motherfucker because you could have just capped it off at allowing them to have sadistic thoughts that never are able to amount to anything by giving them instant reactions for mean thoughts. So they always bounce back to just thinking good, loving feelings. So even if you wanted to have a system where beings could have some semblance of ability to fuck up really bad, right? For the sake of your psycho brain being like, you know what? I value this principle of beings being able to fuck up really bad because I just value that for some reason. Okay. There's no good reason why you would or should value that, but all right, let's just give you the benefit of the doubt because that's something you value as the cosmic source of everyone and everything, right? You value for some fucked up reason the ability of living beings to feel or think cruel thoughts potentially, right? And you'll you'll never be able to articulately explain why you actually like that kind of a system, but okay, let's just say you do, all right? And everybody's just talking, okay, cool. We accept it. We agree that you're a being who likes the potential of allowing beings to fuck up really bad in ways that harm others and themselves. Okay. All right. That's your value set in you. So that value set being the case, if you had a system of anything at all that was a streamlined system of actual justice in that kind of a context, but you also valued simultaneously to valuing people's ability to fuck up, but you what you valued more was them remaining in a paradise state as your main emphasis, your main priority, right? Your main focus. Well, then you just have a system set up to where they would face an immediate instant reaction the second they had any cruel thought or unkind feeling at all. 
boom, they would just feel so horrible about having that thought or feeling they would never want to have it again. It would be a one and done. There would be no birth they would need to take. There would be no torturous, painful experience they would need to have beyond just, oh, that doesn't feel good. So let's just do blissful things and not have those kinds of thoughts. Like you wouldn't be able to go very far into feeling cruel thoughts at all because it would feel so bad the more you went into it that you would just be like, well, okay, fuck this. There's nothing about this that feels good at all, at all. So I'm not going to think or feel those things because why would you? Because it just feels so bad, right? There you go. Lesson learned. That's how karma, if it was an actual real thing, would operate that way. <clears throat> now, that's a demonstration of how it's still a fucked up system. It's still clunky. It's still inefficient. It's still unnecessary. But it's way fucking better than this thing we have right now. It's a lot less bad. Because you wouldn't have anybody ever being tortured. You would just have, at the most, okay, oh shit, that felt bad. I had a cruel thought and it felt really bad. So therefore, I'll never allow myself to have a cruel thought again because of how bad it feels. So you could have maximal freedom of desire and experiences and everything. Sure, in, in some stupid, crazy psychosis, you have the ability to have a bad thought or whatever. But it just feels so bad, you don't have any inclination to keep feeling it because you can't stand the feeling of having the bad thought. You know what I mean? And it would just cap off there. It would just stop there. There would be no bad actions that ever took place because they wouldn't be able to. It, the, the thought itself would feel too bad for you to ever want to have it again, you know? So this whole delayed response bullshit, this whole idea of this eternal fucking Mr. Gadget episode. These fuckers promoting this delayed version of karma idea. Oh, no, no, you'll, you'll face your reactions, but it might be delayed. Delayed to the future life. Massively delayed, right? It's a continual fucking episode of... I'll get you next time, Mr. Gadget. I'll get you in the next life, Mr. Gadget. You ever seen those Mr. Gadget episodes? The, the evil villain, he always, he's always petting his cat at the ends. And he's always saying that he's going to get Mr. Gadget in the next next time, right? It's always next time. It's a, I'll get you next time, Mr. Gadget. And these motherfuckers are, are saying that's a system of justice. This eternally, continually delayed fucking bullshit thing. That's not justice. It's a fucking continual cartoon episode of really sadistic, twisted varieties. It's a fucking Mr. Gadget episode. And they're going to say that that's an actual system of fucking justice. Sure. Yeah. Yamaraja, the lord of death and punishment in the Hindu Vedic Sanatana Dharma tradition. He'll get you in the afterlife after you die. Next life. There he is. He's just waiting for you. This, all this delayed bullshit. You could just you could just have torturers instantly tortured before they actually can physically. You could just have them tortured exactly right as they're torturing the person, so they'd have to like go out of their way ah, as they're trying to like take the knife across the other person's body and feel the same sensations the other person is feeling, so that they like couldn't continue on with the torture because they'd be feeling it themselves. You know, you could have a system like that, and it'd be a much more streamlined system. But the point is, you wouldn't need it to ever get even remotely close to that. You could just have a system where you have maximal freedom of will, desire, experience, pleasure. Minus the potential of ever falling into a temporal, material, misery-ridden state. And that would just keep every being in paradise forever. And that would specifically not involve any being ever having to take birth, ever taking out a temporal body ever going through our incarnation, this or that, going through all these different experiences, none of it would ever be necessary. You learn 100% of your lesson and more just by microscopically having a cruel thought, oh, fuck, and you just still be in paradise. Damn, that felt fucking terrible. What the hell was that shit? But no births, no taking bodies, none of this other bullshit, okay? Would it be, none of it would be necessary. And then those of you who say, it's not necessary. Exactly. It isn't necessary. So therefore, a cosmic being would ensure that it didn't happen as an experience at all. 
whatsoever. Not even an illusory experience. Because that being would know, well, well, amidst them having this illusory experience, it's going to feel like it's the most real thing there is, even though they can intellectually understand it's not technically the deepest reality. It's going to feel real. So therefore, because it's going to feel real in my cosmic deep intelligence, and I'm aware of that, I'm going to ensure that they don't have the experience of the torturous pain as an experience that they feel. Because while they have their intellectual depth of thinking in them going around in their brain, it's still going to feel real if they're being tortured to death. You see? But the fact that these so-called cosmic benevolent fuckers don't acknowledge that specific point in any of these scriptures or texts or talk about that in particular or articulate that awareness in themselves. They just go on about, oh, it's not technically the deepest reality. It's just an illusory this and that. You have to get beyond dualities and go to transcendent. The real world is there. It's like, okay, duh, whatever. You do still understand, though, that the experience is feel real, right? And that would be what is your going to be your criteria for what you allow sentiences to experience or not. It's not going to be what the technical status of the fucking thing is or not. No, your criteria is going to be, fuck the technical status. I'm not going to let sentiences get to that degree of pain and anguish just because I value some system of arbitrary fucked upness where every being everywhere has the potential to fall into a tortured state. No. Uh-uh. You see? So, and the amount, God damn it, the amount of fucking detailed specifics that happen in terms of thoughts, feelings, sensations, physical actions, mistakes, accidents, the amount of fucking detail that would need to be accounted for for a system of delayed karmic reactions to actually work at all, even 50%, is just, it's fucking nightmarish. There's too many fucking details to be accounted for. It doesn't matter how intelligent you are or how expert you are, there's too many different things happening all at once at the same time, all happening together for any version or system of delayed reactionness to be a thing that would ever work or be accounted for. There's going to be massive numbers of living beings who you're going to be forced to have to just let get away with their crimes and horrible things. And a massive number of beings you're going to have to fail to reward, even though you might want to or prefer to because of the logistical nightmare of the actions and reactions all at once happening all the fucking time. It doesn't matter how expert you are or how skilled it's, it's mechanically not doable to have a system work where every being everywhere is actually getting punished or rewarded correctly, accurately for every last little fucking thing. It wouldn't work. The, the mechanics wouldn't work for that is what I'm saying. It's like trying to claim that you can run a car with square wheels, right? Square tires. I'm talking all the way square. I'm not talking square with little, like, rounded edges that could still move and then clunk, clunk, clunk. I'm talking about, like, all the way flat, sharp, square tires, wheels, right? The thing ain't going to fucking run or move. If it runs or moves at all, it's going to be kerplunk, 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 kerplunk. It's not going to roll. You see what I'm saying? It's just going to clunk, 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 clunk. That's how karma would be working, and is going on if it exists at all as a thing whatsoever. That's how it's operating. It's not any system that's working properly at all. So no, it's not a karmic wheel. It's a karmic clunky nightmare fucking thing that just clunks along and clanks along and slops along. It, it like it, and it it's missing all sorts of things on the way, you know? It's like a really fucking terrible uh nightmare of a job where a guy's like fucking sitting there behind a bunch of screens. And he's like, Oh shit. You know, like those little fucking games where it's like the little fucking, uh, crocodiles or alligator and you whack their heads and like, oh, 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 and you have to like whack each one, whack a mole or whatever the fuck it is. I love that game, by the way, it's a fucking hilarious game. And I actually beat that game multiple times where I whacked every single fucking head. 
I was just so fast on my reaction speed and shit. You got a crap ton of tickets. But it's like that. You, but it's like that times like a gazillion. Like you'd, ha- you'd have so many little fucking whack-a-mole heads popping up all at once randomly everywhere. You'd have to have – like the, the amount of fucking like heads you'd have to bop and the speed at which you'd have to fucking bop them and have to be on – like part like ev- like microscope like every little fucking detail whack 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 you'd have to like be on the ball continually with every last little fucking thing nonstop. It would be a fucking nightmare for even the most cosmically intelligent, deeply aware being of all. Like no being would ever impose that kind of a fucking nightmare on themselves because it'd be an eternal nightmare because you have beings all the time doing this, that, and the other all the fucking time everywhere, and you have to count for all sorts of shit continually. It's like what the fuck. Why the hell would you set something up like that? You know, <clears throat> it's insane. So it's like, okay, if that analogy doesn't work, if that analogy still doesn't make sense enough to you, they can another, take any other analogy you can think of in reference to the damn fucking thing. Think of any overly complicated thing that self contradicts itself all the time continually, right? Think of like a uh, a big sphere full of fucking marbles and balls like shaken up and spun around in fucking circles, right? Like you're having to account for every last little fucking micro motion of every one of those little fucking spheres bouncing around in that larger sphere, whacking the other ones and shit like that. It's just... <laughs> It's too much. There's too many fucking details. So, so the very fact that in the past humans thought that they could get away with promoting this idea that, oh, here, this sounds so clever that we're going to talk about this. But no, you're talking about a system that is so insanely oversimplistic in how you're describing it or explaining it that would never be able to work. Even if it was a thing that was actually going on, it wouldn't be able to work. <laughs> the mechanics aren't there for it. Not the laws of physics wouldn't allow for a system of let's describe it that way. The actual laws of physics that are those laws don't allow for a system of karma to exist within them. Okay, capiche? Gravity doesn't allow karma to exist. All the other laws of physics that go on don't allow karma to exist. Okay, even you flat earthers who deny gravity and all these other types of things, or those among flat earthers who deny gravity, blah, 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 blah. You get the idea or deny this or deny that laws of physics or whatever. Oh, the laws of physics are not actual things. We're bound by blah, 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 blah. The point is whatever version of laws you believe or adhere to or think are going on there, those laws contradict karma being able to be a thing also, even if it's a different set of physical laws outside the ones that are currently verified and proven. So even if you're, if you're a conspiracy hypist, take any other alternate set of physical laws operating shit, they still wouldn't allow for karma to exist as a thing or to work. Even then, even if it was a different system of physics, still wouldn't fucking work. For the same exact reasons we've just described, you can take any alternate variation of physics, it still wouldn't fucking work. Okay? Okay. It'd still be the same logistical fucking nightmare in any other variation of any other reality. All right? And then you got the fuckers going on saying, oh, but no, it's only the human species that faces karma. So however many humans we have on Earth right now, 8 billion. Okay, motherfucker. Billions of fucking humans on Earth. Millions. Any, even, even thousands of humans. Okay? It would be a logistical nightmare at even the level of thousands of humans throughout the world, not even fucking coming close to tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands, just a batch of fucking humans, it would still be a logistical nightmare. Even a small number of humans, it would still be a logistical nightmare to keep track of all the microscopic thoughts and feelings and exact actions they engaged in, in a relationship to other sentiences and other beings in this world, right? exactly why they hunted that particular time of day, that exact spot, what they were thinking while they were hunting, why they hunted at all. Why didn't they just abstain from hunting? Why didn't they have compassion for that particular specific deer in that particular day? You see what I'm saying? There's all sorts of shit to account for there. Like it's not, <laughs> God damn it. You know, did they lust after their neighbor's wife or did they not? Did they actually just think about it and, 
not act on it? Uh, did they did they sit there in bed while a child was starving ten miles away, or did they physically get up to save the child that was starving? Uh, why did they ignore or tune out that the child was starving? Why did they absorb in meditation? Why did they use meditation as their excuse to not save the child? Why did they save that child when they could have been saving their own child at home? Why did they prioritize the other village over theirs? Why did they prioritize their village over the other village? Why were they being dualistic and this and that? And You see? You see? Even if in the world there was only a small number of people, like one village of 10 people and another village of 10 people, it would still be a logistical nightmare to keep track of that shit. Because then you have how those humans are interacting with the rest of the world itself, the animals in the world, the rocks, the trees, the ground. Why did you scratch that particular part of ground instead of that part of ground? Why did you build that house there instead of there? Why did you flatten out that part of ground instead of this part of ground? Why did you chop that tree down instead of this one? What You see what I'm saying? What was your motive here versus here versus that like... <sighs> You see? But we've got billions of fucking people throughout the world. All right? Billions. Fucking billions. Okay? The amount of rewards and punishments you'd have to account for for this many motherfucking people interacting with this many other motherfucking people throughout the world, especially with the internet and online now. Holy shit! The amount of fucking continual work you're going to have to do nonstop every day of your fucking existence just to account for all the rewards and fucking punishments. Holy fuck. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? And you're going to say that there's a being actively doing this all the fucking time as what they fucking do? What the hell? Talk about the worst torture imaginable in and of its fucking self. Fuck, man. <laughs> Just having that position would be its own fucking torture, for fuck's sake. Think about it. And then they're going to bring up this, oh, but yes, it is a torture. It's acknowledged that Yamaraja is in a torture state. I don't see descriptions of Yamaraja screaming and rolling around on the ground, feeling the continual torment of the fact that he has that position. I hear descriptions and read descriptions of him sitting there calmly on his throne, talking to one person and another person, and another, not to mention the how many times he has to expand himself into all these different forms seated on different thrones throughout the entire fucking cosmos, all at the same time talking to a gazillion people all at once because there's all sorts of people dying all the fucking time, right? Saying, okay, I'm going to punish you for this and reward you. It's like, a, it's like that fucking uh, auction stuff. You know? Like you got like a thousand different fucking things you got to reward this person for, and then a thousand things you got to punish this person for, and vice versa, and blah. And you're just like, ah, blah, 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 you know, like how they fucking do at the auctions. All right, you're gonna burn it hell over here. You know, you know, enjoy it, heaven over there. You're gonna get a thousand years for you, a hundred years for you. Blah, 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 blah. Think about this shit. Come on, fuck, man. It wouldn't go like you know he's just sitting on a throne. You know, in your particular case, it's gonna go this way. And then this way, and then the, you wouldn't have the time for that shit. It's going to be all the fucking time, you know? So many fucking people you have to count for. And like, see, so yeah, it's just absolutely fucking absurd, you know? The, just the amount of fucking bullshit and shit that people tune out and don't fucking even think about within the fold of the Hindu ideas is just fucking crazy, man. Not only just the Hindu fold of it, New Age ideas, all sorts of shit, you know? It's just... They don't fucking get it. They don't, they'll never understand it. They'll never get it because they don't fucking think enough about it. They don't think enough about it. That's the problem. That's what pisses me off about most humans most of the time. It's so fucking obvious where they're not thinking, where their thinking stops and caps off at, and where their stupidity doesn't allow their thinking to go past. It pisses me off. It's annoying because it causes problems for me in life, real problems, because I have to pick up the work and babysit these motherfuckers in their stupidity. All right. When I say babysit them in their stupidity, it means it's extra time everybody else has to spend working on shit, studying shit, learning how to do shit that those motherfuckers will never learn or understand how to do philosophically and skill wise. And we're always having to pick up the slack for these dumbass motherfuckers slowing everything down because of how fucking stupid they are. Okay. So no, your system of karma, your karma idea is so clearly man-made, it's so poorly thought, only a dumb fuck of the lowest goddamn IQ would think of such a fucking thing. 
especially in the modern world. Hell, even in the ancient world. There's no way in hell a deeply IQ thinking person would have come up with that. Because it only would have convinced other idiots. Okay? That's all there is to it. So, with that, I will talk to you soon. I hope you found this enjoyable and great food for thought. And great points that you can bring up to people who are trying to promote to you this bullshit that karma exists as some sort of cosmic system of justice. Of either a personal variety or an impersonal universal mechanic variety. Both are equally bullshit ideas and concepts, neither of which could work. And I've just demonstrated to you how, and there's many other ways I can demonstrate to you how in other videos, why that wouldn't work, can't work, and even if it was working, would be a clunky, shitty system. Have a good one.